everyone to this episode of Who's Hiring? Uh, today we have with us Christine Black. She's the EEO manager of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Buffalo District. So welcome, Christine. Thanks for joining us. Happy to be here today. So Christine, can you uh, just tell us a little bit about your organization and why it's such a great place to work? So the first thing I have to say is that a lot of folks are misled when they hear the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Um, very few of us are in the Army and very few of us are engineers. So we are really looking across the spectrum. When I talk about the Corps of Engineers, I usually describe it as the government's construction firm. So the Buffalo District handles everything from Syracuse out to Toledo. So if the government in that region wants to build a new facility or wants to um, take a look at a wetland and figure out if there's a better way to protect it, if they need to build a dam or they need park rangers to staff that dam, or if they um, they need to take a look at a coastal water line and figure out if they need to put in anti-erosion measures or if they're going to look at an old harbor and figure out is there a better way to do this harbor that's going to protect the waterway better. That's what the Army Corps of Engineers does. We have engineers. We also have, um, like I said, park rangers. We have computer scientists. We have biologists. Um, I'm an attorney. So definitely not what I thought I went to law school for. What's really, really cool about it is just the breadth of our mission and how many different things we get to put our fingers in. So one day you might be working to help mitigate um, the Manhattan Project. A lot of the research for that was done in the Western New York, Eastern Ohio region. And so one of our projects is to go into those sites and make sure test whether or not they're habitable for humans in the future. And if they're not, figure out how do we fix that. Um, the next day, you might be working with a biologist who is doing a count on a specific endangered flower in a meadow. So there's really just all kinds of different projects. Um, one of our big ones right now is we're building a new VA out in Canandaigua. So we have to do a bunch of support for that. You have safety folks. You have folks who are doing planning. You have purchasing folks. Um, you have a bunch of folks who do ethical stuff about how we're sourcing who we're working with and making sure that it's fair. So there's really the full breadth of experience and it just changes so much from day to day, which makes it really fun sometimes. That's fantastic. Sounds like such a wide variety of, of opportunities. Now, Christine, you mentioned um, you're in the Buffalo District and two of our Penn West schools, Clarion and California, um, I think are in the Pittsburgh District. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah, they are. Okay, great. So opportunities available really across both districts that are similar to what you've talked about? Yeah, and actually the Pittsburgh district is in our, what we call division. So we all work together. Uh, so um, everybody who handles the Great Lakes or the Mississippi Valley, we all work together on various projects. We share resources. So I mentioned the Canandaigua one. That's actually being run by Nashville, but we're doing a lot of the the on the ground work for them. So you could be a park ranger for one and then potentially move over to another. Um, I know that there's a couple of sites in and around Pittsburgh um, that we work closely with because we're on the same waterways as them. So opportunities are across the region. Oh, that's fantastic. And I mean, being a, a federal agency, it sounds like people could relocate our students if they come from uh, you know, uh, anywhere across the United States, there would be so, opportunities. Yeah, the government is pretty good for that. Um, once you're into the government, you have kind of preference in hiring. So if you come work for the Army Corps of Engineers in Buffalo and after five or six years, you're like, hey, there's this project in Sacramento I want to work on. You can apply and go work in Sacramento. Um, so the the experience is very interchangeable across the government. Um, and Really, when you're looking at government work, what you think of is more in skills rather than like, here's the specific position. It's, hey, I know how to work with people. I know how to track money. I know how to, um, one of the, the big things for me is like, I know the federal regulations on how a certain system is handled. So no matter what agency I wanted to go work for, no matter where I wanted to work, that system's going to be the same. And so I can go in and say, hey, I have this even though my degree doesn't really have anything to do with the day-to-day -day work that I do, I understand this system. I know this system. Oh, that's such a good point, Christine. So 
talking about that a little bit more, um, you know, skills and how students uh, and, and graduates of our universities can figure out where they fit. What is the best way for our students and alumni to apply for a position in, in the U.S. Army Corps? And walk us through what that looks like a little bit, and especially the skills piece. So this is where it gets a little fun. Um, I will tell you that my resume as an attorney is two pages when I apply to a private sector person. I think the last time I printed my federal resume, it was 11 pages. And that's not because it's difficult, to be clear. It's just that there's a lot of details that you don't normally put in a, a civilian resume. So usually what I say is go on usajobs.gov. That's where you're going to find every job in the government. There's a couple of things I recommend. One, do your resume ahead of time, especially if you're a student. You're not going to have as much specialization as maybe me or you because we would have different skill sets. We might say, hey, I'm going to tailor this resume to be me. I tailor one to an attorney. I tailor one to EEO, which is the work I do now. And I have another one that is tailored for training because I did a lot of training in my last life. Um, when I first graduated from law school, though, I just had, here's my resume. And here's the things I've done. A um, couple of things I say when you're building that resume. One, like I said, always build it ahead of time to focus on things you did. So what I see a lot of is I took an English course. I know how to write. I hope everyone who graduates from college knows how to write. Say instead, you know, I, I had to research a 50 page paper on this subject and I produced this. Um, talk about things that you accomplished. Talk about how much money you managed at a at a bar. Talk about um, the summer internship you had. Hey, I was responsible for making sure that all of this system proceeded correctly. So talk about it in terms of accomplishments. Group it under skill sets. Hey, here's all my writing skills. I've had to edit certain things. I assisted with a newspaper. I was in charge of communications for my club. All these things that kind of give us an idea of the breadth of it. So once you get all that uploaded into USA Jobs, and it's it's not difficult. There's actually a resume builder on there that will walk you through all of it. Um, you can choose, especially at the level that your students might be at, I'd say alumni definitely need to use that system. Um, students can choose to upload their regular resume. The resume builder in USA Jobs will help you be a little bit more competitive. Um, do it ahead of time. And then the really cool thing is, is that on USA Jobs, you can set up search filters. So you can say, hey, I want to be notified of every job with the Army Corps of Engineers in Buffalo. And every time we open a job, you will get an email from them. Your resume is already in there. All you have to do is go in and drop a, a the resume into the box. Um, most jobs in the federal government are open for two weeks. So if you're trying to scramble to get stuff when the job opens, it might close before you get a chance to do it. Some of them, it's not common for the core, but some government jobs, they'll say, hey, we're going to only take the first hundred resumes because they don't want to sift through the thousand resumes that they might get in two weeks for some of the really, really competitive jobs. Here's the thing, USA Jobs compared to most job websites is great at sorting things out. So figure out what you want. For most of our new grads, you're gonna be hired somewhere between the GS2 and the GS7 range, okay? So if you see a job that's posted for a GS12 or 13, unless you had experience before college, which some folks might, or you had really significant work in between your undergrad and your grad program, you're probably not gonna get hired at that level. So what you're gonna to wanna to know about is those two to seven levels. In the government, you move up really quickly. So it's not uncommon for us to hire a new master's grad at a seven level, and the next year they're a nine, and the next year they're 11. So that pay can go up pretty quickly. Um, so you can set up a system and say, hey, I wanna know every park ranger job in the Army Corps of Engineers across the country that comes open because I'm open to moving anywhere. Or you can say, hey, I only wanna know about Buffalo because I have family there and I know that I'd have a network once I graduated. So you can really um, kind of specify the things that you wanna know about and then just wait for those job opportunities to come to you. Um, the, the, the government hiring system moves either incredibly quickly or incredibly slow. So. Um, I think there was about a month between when I put in my job application and when I got the job offer for this position. There are jobs that I applied to a year ago that I'm still getting notifications that I'm in the system for. 
So you will see that it kind of depends on the agency. I will tell you that Buffalo moves really quickly. We usually try to um, advertise and hire within about a month, month and a half. Um, because we don't want people hanging out there. We want them to know that they have a place with us. So get your resume done ahead of time. Set up um, some filters. You can look on there for specific job types. You can look on there for specific pay grades. You can look on there for specific locations. Uh, one thing I will say, if you're a new grad, you're gonna have a lot of jobs open to you that somebody who graduated 10 years ago won't. So make sure that you check the box that says student in addition to open to the public because new grads have special hiring authority. So I can hire somebody who just graduated six months ago for a position that normally I could only promote internally for. So keep an eye out for stuff like that. Oh my gosh, Christine, such great tips. And thank you for summarizing those. Um, is there, now I know you said sometimes it moves quickly, sometimes, you know, in your district it does, sometimes um, not so quickly. Are there any ways that uh, applicants can follow up after they apply or is it really just, you know, wait to hear from through the system what their status oh, is? The system will update. So you'll have an idea on the system of where your resume is at. Um, government hiring is a little bit weird because the resumes don't come straight to me if I'm the hiring manager. They go first to our HR folks and they're gonna look through them. And this is where really picking out those skills is important because if we don't see things, if and remember that this is a, a person who works full-time in HR. If they don't see things on your resume that match with the skills that are described in the, the posting, they're gonna say, okay, hey, this person doesn't really fit. And so I'm never gonna see your resume. You will get a notification on USA Jobs though that says, hey, you're, you haven't been moved forward to the hiring manager. Or you might get a notification that says, hey, you've been moved forward to the hiring manager. And what that means is, hey, I've been sent 15 resumes of people who qualified. And so now I need to go through and figure out, hey, who are the five people I'm gonna interview? Um, I will say the Corps of Engineers tries very, very hard to make sure that everybody knows where they're at in the system and to update you on USA Jobs. There are some agencies that will not do that. Um, there are some jobs that I applied for in 2007 when I was in the military that I still have sitting on my USA Jobs because those agencies have never bothered to close them. So um, you're gonna have a vague idea where you're at. At the bottom of every USA Jobs announcement, there's gonna be like a, hey, if you have questions about this, go here. And once you've applied to a job, even after it closes, you can still see that job posting. So you can go into it. You can find that email. You can email that person and say, hey, could you give me an update on where it's at? Generally, I would say for the Corps of Engineers, if it's been more than a month, you definitely want to email and just kind of say, hey, what's going on? Because um, like I said, we try to move very quickly. And especially with some of the new infrastructure that's coming down the pipeline from Congress, we have a lot of positions to fill. So I would say follow up. I would also say if you don't hear back from one, that doesn't mean you shouldn't apply to the next one. Um, that doesn't mean you weren't a fit. It might mean that there was a better fit or somebody who had a stronger set of skills in that pool. It doesn't mean that you wouldn't work for that. It means that maybe you weren't the right one that time. Got it. Okay. So, Christine, what would you say are some of the, the best um, perks or the, you know, the, the reasons why uh, candidates should be looking to work for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers? For my new grads, what I will say is there are a lot of places where you can work when you graduate, and a lot of them you're going to be sitting at the front desk answering phones, or you're going to be making copies, or you're going to be the person in the room whose voice is, you're expected to sit back and just kind of take it, right? We're going to throw you in day one. We're going to say, okay, here's where you're at. Here's a project you can handle. Here's a portion of our project you can handle. Or, hey, you're going to go with this person. You're going to be their voice on site. Um, there's a ton of focus on training. How do we build you up so that in a couple of years, you are that 12 or you are that 13, or you do have experience with that system? Um, there's a ton of focus on making sure that you can, you can kind of take the career path that you want to take. One of the cool things that the core does that not everybody in the government does is we have what are called details. So let's say that you are, we have a, a group that's called the schedulers. And so part of their work is they work with contractors and they work with our budget folks and they work with our computer folks and they make sure that everything's on on pace. So they work directly for our project managers. So let's say you're a scheduler and you have been having contact with the folks in the biology department. And you're like, this sounds really cool. 
So if somebody goes on leave or somebody accepts a detail or maybe somebody moves on, we might say, hey, anybody who's interested, you can have a four month posting to this section. And you would apply to that section and we'd say, okay, cool. You're gonna come work with the biologist for four months. You're gonna figure out, is this actually what you wanna do? Or when you go back to scheduling, hey, is this the skill set that you never knew you needed so that you actually understood what was going on with this one specific project? So there's a ton of cross-training. There's a ton of opportunity. Um, there's a ton of access to really cool projects, stuff that you get to do because you're the government that other folks wouldn't get to do. The other thing I'll say is that pay moves up pretty quickly, um, which is really nice when you're three years out of college or out of a master's and you're already sitting at a GS-11 level. Um, also, the cost of living in Buffalo is pretty low, so I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> but there's a bunch of opportunity there. I won't get into the benefits. That's something that I'd let if you were to come interview for us. It's something that I would let the, the benefits folks speak to. They're pretty good. I came out of private industry. I am not upset about the benefits. Um, and then there's there's just kind of the, the side perks that come with just the randomness of the core, there was one day where um, the city of Buffalo was doing work on the water line. And so we didn't have water in our building. So I went to work, I grabbed my computer and I'm walking out and I saw one of the guys from the dive team. He's like, hey, he's like, we're gonna go out on the water since we don't have water in the building. Do you wanna go out with the dive team? And there was just a moment where I was like, except it was 20 degrees. And he was talking about going out on Lake Erie. And I was like, you know what? I am in khakis today. I'm not going to go out. Please ask me again in the summer. I definitely want to go out with the dive team, but I don't want to do it today. <laughs> so there's, there's always the random chance that you're going to end up with the dive team on Lake Erie. <laughs> that sounds like fun on a warmer day. On a warmer day. Right. So Christine, we know a person's career path can take a lot of twists and turns. Um, what's you know your path been like, and what's the best career advice that you received that helps you get where you are in your career today? So I will say, um, I used to give a speech, and I would always start out with, "So I'm a college dropout. I'm a law school dropout, um, but I'm also an attorney." So I made it past that. So I actually started college at 16 and dropped out. And college just seemed really big and really scary. And so I went and joined the military. Um, got a little bit of confidence, figured out how to pay for college myself, and went back to college. Now, I graduated with my undergrad degree when I was 25. Um, went to start law school, and it turned out I was going to have to deploy. And it turned out I didn't have enough money to do law school that year. So I had to drop out the day before law school started. Um, went and deployed again, came back, figured out how to pay for law school. And I... I really will say that the time between undergrad and law school was where I kind of figured out my trick um, because I I wasn't the best grades wise. It's not that I wasn't smart. It's not that I wasn't good. It was just, it was, I, the, the process of studying and then turning studying into tests was boring for me. And so I, I passed the class, but I was never like the person that was going to put in 300 hours and memorize every single thing, which in the law, you should never memorize things, but. What I really started to focus on was skills. So when I graduated, I had a paid offer, which is at the time that I graduated was not common from law school if you weren't going into the big firms. But what I was able to say when I went in is, hey, I'm a B student in law school, right? My professors love me, but I'm a B student. Um, what I can bring to you is I've done X number of trials and I've written X number of papers and I've practiced this negotiation skill in a room with a defense attorney sitting across from me. Um, also, hey, I've done X, Y, and Z to work on my people skills. So I understand what it's like to sit across from somebody who's on public aid. I understand what it's, across, it's like to sit across from somebody who can afford a $600 an hour attorney. Um, and so when I was talking to employers, I really sold it on skills. I talked about, hey, here's a time where I screwed up. Here's what I do differently now. Um, so I really, really, especially as my career has taken different twists and turns, I would not have predicted when I graduated from law school that this is where I was going to end up. Um, but as I've moved through those, really what I focused on is, hey, here's a unique view that I bring to this. And here's the skill set that's going to happen with it. Um, in my former life, I actually worked in higher education. And I, I went to this big national conference. I'd been in higher education for maybe six months. 
and uh, I went into this this session that they were doing, and it was supposed to be on veterans in higher education. And everybody that was on the stage was an older white male who had been in ROTC and then gone into the military. So none of them had been a student veteran that returned to campus, which is a very different mindset. You're a little bit older. You are already experienced and exited the military rather than your whole school career being about putting you back into the military. Um, and so I was at this conference and they kept answering things. And I was finally like, I answered two or three questions in the audience. And I finally took a chair and I went up on the stage and I said, look, I'm not part of this presentation, but nobody up here is actually representing my experience. And so the other thing I will say is don't be afraid to speak up in the room when you bring something unique to the question. That doesn't mean you're always going to be right, but speak up if you're bringing something unique or if you're recognizing, hey, there's a problem. It's okay to phrase it as, hey, maybe I'm new, but did anyone else notice that there's no actual student veterans up there? It's not what I did because I'm talky. Don't be that. Um, but speak up when you bring something unique to the problem. Don't assume just because you failed out once that it's not for you. <laughs> Finally did get those degrees. And look at your skill set. Sell yourself on your skill set. Like I said earlier, if you are getting an English degree, that doesn't mean the only thing you can do is English. That does mean that any job that you're looking at, you can talk about, hey, here's how I've learned about communication. Here's how I've learned about how to, to edit. Here's the breadth of knowledge that I bring to it. Think about your degree in terms of skills when you're looking at those jobs. You would be amazed how little specification there is at the end of a bachelor's compared to at the end of a PhD. Once you have a PhD, you're pretty much locked into that field, right? But for that bachelor's, you have time to explore. You have time to figure out if your skill set works. You might go into a job and be like, hey, this is the one skill that's really cool for me. I'm going to go into another job that specializes in that skill. Oh, Christine, I love that advice. And the, focusing on what's unique about you and the skill set you bring is so important. Um, I, I want to mention, you know, every Penn West student has a career coach that can help that student to figure out how to translate from thinking about major to skills, because skills are the language of the workplace, as you mentioned. So if if there are students who would like some help translating what they've done and the experiences they've had into skill sets that they bring to the workplace and what makes them unique, I would really encourage them to meet with, with their Penn West career coach. So thank you so much for that advice. And thank you for I sharing. Swear. I would actually echo that. And especially if you get a job interview, take that job, um, take the job ad into your career coach and say, hey, can you help me practice a little bit? I want to I want to have a story or two that I can tell to demonstrate these skills. Sit down with them beforehand. So the first time that you think about those skills shouldn't be as you're logging into the interview. It will <laughs> And that, that's just because it'll make you more nervous. But I definitely, I echo what Rhonda said, please go into your career coach and, and take that in there and say, hey, how do I do this? Absolutely. And a practice interview doesn't hurt either. <laughs> Christine, thank you so much for sharing your, your tips and your advice and opportunities uh, with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Any final things that you'd like to say before we sign off for today? If you're looking for something fun to do, come work for the Corps. Awesome. And the website again? The place that you can find information on the jobs is usajobs.gov. Awesome. Christine, thank you so much. Of course.